Good morning, everyone, and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. It appears hay production is following the trend of high yielding crops this year in Oklahoma. And as our Austin Moore explains, it's translating into some extra green. Well, Dave, we're hearing some really good news about the, the forage and the hay people have been putting up this year. There is good news. There, you know, we had an excellent forage production summer. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've seen quite a few results where people have had their hay tested and the results look good. All right, now let's talk, because we're not just talking about the amount of hay, we're talking about really the quality. What, what are we seeing out there? What kind of an example would, would you give us? Well, you know, this hay has got a bright green color to it if you dig inside the bale. Right. And this is going to, this is tall grass prairie hay. Okay. Uh, so it's going to be low in protein regardless of when it was put up. It's going to run around 6% protein and about 54% TDN. Okay. It's interesting, uh, Roger Williams is an extension educator in Cherokee County, okay. and he had 29 of his producers send in samples to okay. have tested at a commercial That's laboratory. That's a pretty good number for a county. Yeah, at t you know, 29 samples, and of those 29 samples, uh, 26 had adequate or above adequate protein for a gestating cow. In other words, 8% all the way up to 13.7% crude protein. It's very, it's very good protein. Excellent protein. Of course, that's probably Bermuda grass compared to the prairie hay we're looking at here. Right. And, and a lot of that was probably fertilized, which will also increase the protein content. But still good quality hay. Now, uh, is that accurate to what we're seeing around the state or is that really just Cherokee County? Well, you know, I can only say that about Cherokee County's results, but we, you know, we had an excellent weather for harvesting hay this year. We had good rain, timely rainfalls, and, and our hay quality here is good. I talked to a lot of producers from around the state, and I think that'd be a pretty, you know, from my perspective, a good general consensus. So across the state, better than average year. Better than average year. There's still going to be some hay that was late harvested, mm -hmm. some that wasn't fertilized. Right. Uh, some that was rain damaged and so there's you know there's going to be low quality hay and you know people just need to have it have it tested so they know what they've got. Now in terms of producers feeding this the, this winter how is this going to affect what they're going to do with their cattle? Well it's it should directly impact what they do with their feeding program. Uh, three of those producers in Cherokee County need to supplement their hay when their cows are getting that hay as their primary nutrient right. source. The other, what, 26, don't need to purchase any supplement at all. Not at all? Not at all, because the, you know, 8% is about the minimum requirement, and there were only three of those 29 samples below 8. And um, they also had energy evaluated in those 29 samples. Four of the samples were below 54% uh, TDN or energy. Uh, the other 20 what is that, 25 samples were above. And so they don't need a protein or an energy supplement for that really nice quality hay there in Cherokee County. So that's really good news for their producers. They can keep that money in their pocket this winter. Yeah, those, those 25 can. Right. Uh, but, you know, hopefully, they, and I'm glad those folks have it tested so that those four or five that happen to have lower quality hay know that and know that they need a supplement and the others don't. They can save a, a lot of money by just just having that knowledge. Let's break down some numbers for those folks that do need to purchase. How do they make that decision between, you know, a little bit cheaper supplement with a little less quality to it, or maybe a little more expensive one, but that's a lot higher quality. Yeah. How do those numbers break down? Yeah, I, what you refer to there is an ongoing discussion, argument in the coffee shop that's kind of interesting. Uh, the One of the most popular feed products here in the state is a 20% range cube, for example. Mm -hmm. And it's a good all-around product. But we just gathered up some local prices here recently. And so just as an example, I'll give you a price of about $230 per ton this fall okay. for 20% cubes. Now, that's going to vary quite a bit. So right. people need to get their own price. But that's an example we'll use. Uh, for the, let's say, the lowest quality hay in Cherokee County was 6.5%. It's going to take three pounds of the 20s to fill that protein gap, get it up to 8% diet for that gestating cows. If on the other hand they were to go buy a higher protein like a 38 percent cube, okay. almost twice the amount of protein, right. uh, it would cost them only about 23 cents per cow per day because you're going to feed, feed less. Pound and a half instead of three pounds. And right. So 
they wind up spending on 100 cows over that gestation period, they wind up spending $1,800 on supplement instead of $2,760 on supplement. Nearly $1,000 saved right there. Quite a bit. And, and you'd think, okay, more expensive supplement, this is going to cost me more money, but it really doesn't. Yeah, if, if you cut back on the amount you feed, deliver the same amount of protein, the more concentrated supplement is less expensive. So I guess really the take home here for producers is, is just get out the pen and paper, do the math, get your hay tested, take care of all this and figure out what the best way to spend your money is. Yeah, and hopefully you've got excellent quality hay like we've talked about and you don't need to purchase the supplement. But if, if you don't, uh, then you do the, the, the math to see what you do need and how little you can get by with because feed's expensive. Right. But I just you know want to encourage folks to uh, go to the foragetesting.org mm -hmm. as uh, the National Forage Testing Association's website gives you all the laboratories that have been certified this year as uh, forage testing labs, which all that means is that they've been audited and, and they've shown that they produce good chemical results in terms of forage testing. All right, great information as always. And if you'd like to check that link and anything else we've got on the subject, visit sunup.okstate.edu, click on show links.